This is Southern Cross News with Rachel Williams. Good evening. A man has been arrested and charged with drug trafficking after he allegedly tried to enter the state with 500 grams of ice yesterday. Police seized the half a million dollar drug haul during a random screening at Hobart Airport. Our reporter Louise Hedger has the details. The 32-year-old arrived just before 8 o'clock yesterday morning where he was subjected to a random search by a drug detection dog. Police allege the man had over 500 grams of the drug stashed in his underwear. It is a, a significant seizure for us and any um, time we can take this amount of drugs off the street is a good day for Tasmania. He was arrested and charged with trafficking and importing a controlled substance and appeared in the Hobart Magistrates Court this morning. Police say they're increasing their presence and cracking down on drug importation. We have uh, began to increase over the last 18 months and we will continue to have an increased presence with the drug detection dog throughout the state. It's understood ice use is a significant issue in Tasmania. I ice is something that um, we can't avoid. It's a national and international problem and Tasmania is not immune to it. The man has been remanded in custody and will appear at a Hobart court at a later date. Anybody with information is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. With the closure of Edith Creek's dairy process looming, the state government has allocated funding for a new assistance body. $1.5 million will go towards helping workers find other jobs once the factory closes its doors. Murray Goulburn's decision to walk away from Edith Creek has sent shockwaves through Smithton and its surrounds. The state government confirming today it has held talks with the dairy processor over how it should respond. It's becoming clear intervention is needed. Demonstrate leadership, demonstrate the fact that we will work very closely with the community. Help comes in the form of a $1.5 million working group, boots on the ground to retrain those losing their job, a pledge to fast track industry investment, but will words translate into work? There is a real opportunity to utilise the skills and expertise that come from the people that work at this plant in value adding. The best outcome is to retain people in circular head. The worst, seeing this site mothballed. We're modelling this on a Caterpillar Transition Task Force where there were um, considerable opportunities that arose as a result of that and bringing the advanced manufacturing uh, sector uh, together. Around 120 employees will be directly affected by the closure. Flow-on effects will hurt elsewhere. The strength of this region is not only its resilience, uh, but also uh, the diversity of enterprise mix, uh, forestry, uh, tourism, uh, agriculture. The working group will report its progress to the government in three months. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. The state government says it isn't concerned about a Labor resurgence following victory in one of the Legislative Council seats over the weekend. The Premier says Labor will try and obstruct any government proposals, but the opposition says it will provide greater scrutiny in the Upper House. Will Hodgman starting with the niceties. Congratulate the victors, um, to those re-elected members and to the new member. I wish them the very best in their endeavours and they have um, obviously a very important function to undertake. But they didn't last long. We'll certainly change the dynamic in the Legislative Council and now Labor are better empowered to obstruct, to stop things happening and to stop us delivering our plan which we were elected to deliver. The opposition leader accusing the government of not adequately consulting with the community over bills such as forestry and changes to the state's anti-discrimination act. We will be able to provide much greater scrutiny of those government bills and to make sure that they do accurately rep represent and reflect community concerns. Labor candidate Sarah Lovell, the new upper house member for Romney. I think there is a mood for change in the Tasmanian community and people are listening to Labor and what we have to say. We're not going to be distracted by uh, polls, uh, nor indeed by this election result. Meanwhile, fresh from another campaign trail and fresh out of the oven, this supporter so thrilled with Rosemary Armitage keeping her seat in Launceston, she baked her a cake. Congratulations, oh, Rosemary. Thank you. It was neck and neck between the incumbent and health professional Narrily Ellis. At the end of the day, I am just very grateful that the people believed in me, that they believe that I, I do work hard for the city, I do fight for the North and I will continue to fight hard for the North. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. 
Police Commissioner Darren Hine is considering a review to reopen a 1973 investigation into political corruption and bribery. Independent MP Andrew Wilkie called on Mr Hine to investigate issues surrounding the fall of the Tasmanian Liberal government in the 1970s when the Deputy Premier Kevin Lyons resigned unexpectedly. That, uh, caused a, a, an unexpected election at which time the Bethune Liberal government was defeated and replaced by a Labor government. Um, and that materially assisted federal group uh, in their pursuit of a monopoly casino licence. Mr Wilkie is asking for answers following the release of historian James Boyce's book looking into the allegations. The federal group says it welcomes the decision to have a senior officer review the file. Former Royal Hobart Hospital CEO Jane Holden has lost her wrongful dismissal case against the state government. Ms Holden was suing the government for over $2 million for loss of income and damage to her reputation following her sacking in 2014. Today the case was rejected by the Supreme Court and the government says she's been ordered to pay for its legal fees. Ms Holden has 21 days to lodge an appeal. With hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment at their disposal, a special training session has put Tasmanian volunteers to the test. Responding to mock-up car crashes, workers learned how to free victims trapped inside in a race against the clock. In the middle of this scene are Tasmania's brave volunteers. Learning how to save someone's life in a car crash. We've got some good scenarios set up here, so you know that would emulate what might happen on the road. On donated car wrecks, these responders are using top-of-the-range equipment worth more than a quarter of a million dollars in total. One veteran says lighter, stronger equipment is making a big difference out in the field. The cars are getting a lot stronger. They're using stronger me metals and tougher metals. The teachers here today have come from Amsterdam. They're ex-firefighters with world-class knowledge. They have a number of different pieces of equipment, spreaders, cutters, sort of things they, they apply for different purposes. Techniques are constantly being reviewed. In decades gone by, workers were told simply to cut through a vehicle. Today, it's about spreading it open. Because with the introduction of airbags and those sorts of things in cars, that's an explosive to us. So if we cut in the wrong spot, we can end up with an explosion and, and then hurt a patient. Today's event coincides with Road Safety Week and Volunteer Week. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. A contributor to the state's emergency response scene has taken out a significant award. Volunteer of six years, Christopher Hine, recognised for stepping up when times got tough. Tasmanian volunteers are being applauded for their hard work and dedication. Everything from sport, tourism and health being recognised at this year's volunteering awards. It's emergency services time to shine, taking out the overall volunteer of the year. The SES and Ambulance Tasmania volunteer is over the moon to also receive the Lifeline Emergency Award. Oh, absolutely ecstatic. I really didn't expect it at all. Um, I, yeah, I'm literally sort of speechless. Christopher has volunteered at SES for six years. He says he's helped with everything from births to forensic searches, but his favourite part? Being able to uh, help and train new volunteers um, oh, and being able to uh, yeah, pretty much give back what I've been given. The state government also has emergency relief on the radar, with $2,000 being invested to boost volunteering numbers when it comes to natural disasters. The very first uh, large sort of disaster that I was involved with was the Denali fires. And it was a result of the Denali bushfires and the overwhelming community response that we had from people outside our trained emergency services who really wanted to get in and provide some assistance. The funding provided to aid a volunteer emergency response service in a bid to improve efficiency in dealing with the impacts of the state's natural disasters. We know in our state, uh, sadly, we are sometimes uh, at the brunt of extreme weather events. And we've seen over the past several years that when emergencies happened, we are always really happy to be able to put up our hands and help. Talia Higgins, Southern Cross News. 
Tickets to the KFC T20 International between Australia and England at Bludston Arena have gone on sale to the general public today. Cricket Tasmania Chief Executive Nick Cummins has urged fans to book early to avoid disappointment and is thrilled that the clash has been scheduled for Tasmania. I think it's very exciting to have them back uh, at Blunston Arena. They've got a great travelling support, which adds a lot of colour um, to the occasion. The clash will be the second match of the T20 Tri-Series and will be held on February 7th. Just 15% of Tasmanian children are being restrained correctly in cars. RACT and Kids Safe Tasmania are using Road Safety Week to urgently call for funding to address the issue before it's too late. RACT is joining forces with Kids Safe Tasmania, warning locals are becoming complacent when it comes to fitting children's car seats. Almost 85% of restraints checked by the RACT have been deemed unsafe. It's looking after our most vulnerable road users. Our children in our child restraints error rate 85% unacceptable. The number hasn't changed since 2015 and is right on par with the national average. You and I driving down the road without our seatbelts on will get booked every day of the week. 85% of, of, of drivers not wearing seatbelts, it'll be front page news. We're looking at serious injury, lifetime injury that will change a whole family's life forever or in the worst case, the death of a child. Constant vigilance is being urged. Uh, we see you know, tethered to the wrong spot, age inappropriate, you know, the seat out of date, um, yeah, many, many different things that we, we see on, on any given day. Um, but the, at the end of the day, these children are at risk and it's up to us to make sure that we keep them safe. Just because a child restraint is right one day, it doesn't mean it's going to be right the next day. You know, seat belts get undone, twists in the straps, so it's not something you can install once and rely on. You have to continually be checking it. The organisations are urging the state government to step in and provide crucial <laughs> funds to tackle the issue. Talia Higgins, Southern Cross News. Now a look at business and finance with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. The Australian share market has snapped a four-day losing streak after encouraging US jobs data, the election of pro-European centrist Emmanuel Macron as French president buoyed investors. The ASX 200 index has risen by 34.3 points. And a short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 74.07 US cents and 67.45 Euro cents. With Glenorchy's stranglehold at KG5 now over, coach Aaron Cornelius says his side is hungry to return to the winners list. The side was run over by Clarence on the weekend, with the Roos now looking to build on its success. Clarence has plenty to smile about. A rampaging final term toppled Glenorchy to maintain the side's perfect record in 2017. But the coach sees room for improvement. We still don't think that our forward line's working fantastic at the moment. Um, it probably took us about three quarters or two and a half quarters to get that to function well on the weekend. Clarence kicked seven unanswered goals in the final term, although there was no magic bullet from the coach's box. Nothing really changed at three quarter time. We just, we just focused on denying them the ball. The last time Glenorchy lost at KG5 was way back in round 16 of 2014. For some players, it was the first time they've had silence in the change rooms after a home game. It's a different group to the last few years, so the guys are yeah, disappointed that they've lost their home record now and they will, uh, I'm sure that there'll be uh, a different um, group that come out on the weekend refreshed and raring to go. Cornelius points to fatigue as a factor in his team's late burnout. Saturday's game was the side's third in 11 days. And the tough run isn't over yet. They face an unbeaten North Launceston in the grand final rematch this weekend. We just want to continue to try and play fast-paced footy. Um, we, we went back into our bit of safety net on the weekend and just kicked it down the line. It's likely Jackson O'Brien will return for the Roos this week for its game against Hobart City Demons. Tassie Mariners players will also be available. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. And the votes are in for the RACT Insurance Player of the Year in the TSL after round six, with Taylor Whitford claiming the three votes in North Launceston's win over Burnie. Clarence's Jason Bailey was judged best on ground after his side's terrific win over Glenorchy. Dylan Fife earned top marks in Lauderdale's win over the Tigers. And Ryan Matthews from Hobart City Demons polled the three votes for his performance against Devonport. 
And to the leaderboard, North Launceston star Zach Burt remains in the lead with nine votes, while Dylan Fife moves up to second on eight. Jay Bowden, Brad Cox Goodger and Jake Cox are tied for third on six votes. Good evening. Here's the way things went today on the first day of Road Safety Awareness Week. 16 in Hobart, 18 for Launceston, 17 for Burnie and Devonport. 19 was the high at Bridport as the south westerly airstream brought a few showers to the west, central and south, but not much measured during the day. St Helens, 18 degrees, Lowhead, Wynyard and Bushy Park, 17, Campania, Flinders Island and Friendly Beaches, 16 degrees, King Island and Grove, 15, Strawn, 13 and Liawini, 8. A spiralling low pressure system brought the cloud to the east of Tasmania. There is low cloud that's covering the bight as another frontal system joins in from the west. Most of the continent is free of cloud. Tropical cyclone Donna off the northwest is now severe and when Donnas get severe they can be very severe. Closer in, cloud over the west, south and east in a southwesterly airstream. Higher cloud formed over the south of the state today. Tomorrow the high over the bight moves closer to Tasmania. The cold fronts to the west have consolidated and severe tropical cyclone Donna is heading off for New Caledonia. Southerly winds are 10 to 20 knots reaching 20 to 30 knots over the east early. Winds tending more variable by the middle of the day with swells to 3 metres in southern waters. Strong wind warning in the east between St Helens Point and Tasman Island. A possible morning shower for Hobart tomorrow, 16 the top, 15 for Adventure Bay, a similar forecast, two overnight for Taralia, a cloudy 13 later on. Launceston partly cloudy and 17, Devonport sunny and 16 and 17 the top for Bridport. Burnie, mostly sunny and 16, 16 also for Strawn, Marawar, partly cloudy, 15 the top. And for St Helens, partly cloudy and 16, 16 for Swansea, white mark, 17 degrees. On Wednesday, morning fog and frost and fine until showers develop over the west in the afternoon. Showers extending statewide on Thursday, uh, that's before contracting to the northeast later in the day. And on Friday, fine apart from showers over the Bass Strait Islands. Early showers for Perth, Melbourne and Sydney tomorrow. Sunny for Adelaide, Cairns, Darwin and Alice Springs. A possible shower for Brisbane. And cloudy conditions currently, 12 degrees in Hobart and Launceston, 11 in Devonport. Rach. Thanks for that, Murph. Well, that's all your news for now. Thanks for joining us. Good night.